Hey guys, today we're taking a look at the Zoids Wild Guz Guzok, I think it's called. Anyway, I'm going to do my usual thing where I unbox and build the thing for you guys, and then we're going to take a look at it in action and how it compares to the Volga from the Rebirth Century line because everyone seems to think it's basically a new version of that kit. Spoiler alert though, it's not. All right, let's take a look. See here, uh, the box is your standard Zoids Wild Fair. This is uh, Zoids Wild Thirteen. I'm actually not seeing an affiliation uh, symbol here. I just realized that. That's weird. I'm curious to see what's on the sticker sheet then. Um, the usual stuff on the sides and on the back. You know, parts box, regular mode, uh, Wild Blast mode, no bow mode apparently. Uh, yeah. Nothing too interesting here. Let's just get this box open and see what we've got in here. Oops. Okay. The usual uh, digital camo insert, of course. Instructions. Uh, nothing in here. Um, the instructions, as usual, come on two pieces of paper. Uh, S bag, A bag, B bag. It's not that much here, so I'm just gonna pop these open and uh, take a look at them right away. No need to edit five times, I don't think. So, as per usual, the A bag contains all of the, um, well, what would usually be the bone mode stuff, even though this thing apparently doesn't have a bone mode. I guess these are the legs here. Yeah, more legs. Of course, this thing has a lot of legs. <laughs> this looks like it goes around the motor. Yeah, a lot of just really mechanical looking parts and not really terribly interesting. A couple of these bone piston things here that you find on every Zoids Wild kit. So, let's take a look at the B bag. Uh, this, as usual, is all of the armor, of course, and uh, feelers. Uh, it's a really nice sort of, I don't know, light warm gray color, I guess. Um, yeah, more feelers. This is uh, the part that goes on the head here, and... Uh, don't know what these are, but they do look like carapace, so, yeah. And finally, the s back. Uh, let me actually take a look at the sticker sheet first, because this is what I want to know about. Yeah. Yeah, you see that? It has affiliation stickers for Freedom or for Supreme, and a bunch of numbers here. And no pilot name, but the, the small ones usually don't. Yeah, I'm really, really behind on the anime. So if uh, if this thing has appeared in the anime yet, then I don't... Then maybe you know about this, but I don't. Um, I guess, uh, it, you know, pilots from at least two teams actually have one of them. Here are the eyes. Uh, pilots. Here's the motor with a little gear here. Uh, lots more gears, gears, axles, stuff. The caps are completely clear, which is kind of interesting. Other than that though, yeah, um, not much point in wasting too much time on this, um, on this unboxing, I don't think. Uh, so let's just get building. I'm actually not going to stop the camera. Live dangerously, right? This is the parts list. Uh, this is the actual building instructions, um, which I am going to set up over here, where you can't see them, but I can. Um, and we are supposed to start by taking uh, these two 
parts here, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And a big ass wheel, also known as S1. Um, now I have to take a real quick look on the parts list. I knew I was going to make a fool of myself immediately. See, because there's actually a whole bunch of wheelie looking parts. And I'm not sure which is which. For once, I actually need the parts list. So, S1. Ah, S1 is this one. Okay, I'm going to set the parts list up here. Uh, also in a spot where I can see it and you can't. So, this is S1. And it goes on this axle here. Oh, this is just like a wheel. It's going to help it pull forward, I guess. Let me clip these two together. And yeah, that's it. Now, S3 would have to be this guy and more S parts. This one and this one, I believe. Come on. Here we go. Uh, yeah, that looks right. Um, Yeah, they go together like this. Here's the uh, the wheel, and we pop these two together like so. Okay, all right. Well, uh, looks like the front of a motorcycle. Haha. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. In case you're not aware. Uh, okay. So next motor and body halves which I'm guessing is these two. Um, take a look here. Uh, this is supposed to say R on it. Let's see if it does, yeah. Right here, see? Probably, uh, I'm probably not gonna be able to, oh no, here's, here's an R, see? Very kid friendly, or, you know, or Space Hamster is a complete moron friendly. Motor goes in like this. Now, this thing goes in here like so. Gotta make sure you don't put this in backwards, of course. And then we attach, not this, but this here. Uh, so we'll fiddly to get this together and pop. Okay. All right, now, what's next? These guys, that looks like A5, um, and which would make this one A6. And they go on like that. Okay, to continue building up the <laughs> torso. That don't look right. Um, it is though. Wait. Do I have the wrong part again? Yes, because I am a colossal fool. This one. Oh, and this one. Okay. All right then. Let's try this again. Yeah. That makes more sense like so okay next I, I have to say like as i'm talking to you about this i am actually looking at the uh i am actually looking at the parts list because all this mechanical stuff it's it's a little confusing if you're just looking at the building instructions you actually really it really helps if you're looking at the parts list where you have pictures of these things where it's where they're a bit more easily sort of identifiable. Um, okay. All right. So uh, it uh, goes together like this. Now. All right. Now the other wheelie thing here. Uh, 
goes on like oh this is actually uh this is the head see here's where the eyes are gonna go uh goes on by means of attaching part number a9 which i think is one of the ones this is a9 and it goes on this peg here upon which we attach this uh, like so and secure it with a cap <clears throat> excuse me with a cap and um, next is this one goes on ugh, this side uh, rubber cap here okay I see this is ratcheted here doesn't really seem to do anything though it's just I mean the head is not loose at all but it's not the ratcheting here it's just it's just friction from uh, from the caps and the parts on the sides holding it in place okay s5 well, we're getting to the actual mechanics of this thing s5 is this little gear here which goes on this peg like so um, and then next we put hold on let me do it like this we need this gear part here which gets one end of this axle doesn't seem to matter which one like that um and then we put it on put it through here yep see this is all rotating now so looks like i'm doing this right and the other I guess this is going to be one of the wheels that drive it forward here. Next we have another funky looking mechanical piece. Um, I need the one that's meant to say L on it, which is this one. See here? <laughs> this is really cool because I think they actually, they, they stopped doing this after a while in the njr um the old the 80s models the 80s models always had this sort of like like really helpful sort of kid friendly stuff um like l's and r's molded into the pieces and etc i did not just say and etc by the way i'm also doing this completely wrong um Okay, so this peg is going, see, I don't understand how, oh, like that, because this doesn't go anywhere. Okay. <clears throat> uh, sorry, just checking the clock on my camera. Yeah, when I, when I watch this back afterwards, I'm going to be embarrassed um as usual but you know if you've been watching these reviews you're kind of used to it by now aren't you i'm always making an ass of myself um s10 s10 that would be this one no yeah there's two of these so which one is it i guess this one I mean, it stands to reason that this would be on the outside, right? So that goes on here and threads into, into this. Something to do with the movement, I'm sure. Smart observation there. No kidding, this is something to do with the movement. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I wonder if all these moving parts have something to do with the movement. Ugh. Be smart. Be smart. Be smart. Okay. Um, <laughs> in my defense, though, it's a bit difficult to figure out what all this is going to do eventually. Um, okay. Let's get this right the first time. Hmm? Here we go. Plugs is in here, yeah. And then this on the back, yeah. 
have no idea why I'm doing a German accent, by the way. It's only sort of offensive because German is actually my first language. Um, and this. Goes. Hmm. Ah. Yeah, the instructions don't really show clearly enough where the, the wind up knob is supposed to go, but it's supposed to go on like this. And then we attach it with a cap, like so. Okay, so that's the torso. Uh, which, I don't know, is just sort of wiggly and weird. Now, legs. Um, how do I tell these apart? All right. The shorter ones go in the back. These go in the middle. Uh, yeah. Like so. Okay. Let's get these on somewhere. All right here on these rods on the side pop 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 whoops oh man I have to get something wrong today pull this off there we go. For the dumb kids in the back. And pop. Well, that's a complete bone mode. I don't understand why the I don't understand why the box doesn't show a bone mode. Also, the instructions do, in fact, say this is bone mode and that you can wind it up at this point using one of these. So, yeah, why don't we do that real quick? Um, I'll shoot some. I'll shoot some better footage of it in motion afterwards. But obviously, I'm going to want to see this before I put the armor on. Whoops. Um, also, I'm too dumb to wind up a wind-up toy these days. Okay, that's all wound up. And... <laughs> yeah, it looks a bit like Molga from the old release. It also goes really far. Across my cutting mat three times. That's pretty cool. I mean, if, if you've been following my reviews, you know I've been I've been testing them on this cutting mat here, and a lot of them couldn't even make it across one time. And this guy like traveled all the way across a couple of times. Pretty cool. All right, so eyes. Which, unfortunately, um, are of the uh, poorly distinguishable variety again. Okay. Here's a good way to figure it out that I've just figured out. <laughs> if you lay them down like this and they face ever so slightly upwards, this is how they go on. So. Uh, or drop it 15 times. This one goes in here. And this one in here. Pop. I like the, I like the face on this guy. Looks mean. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, now. Uh, the feeler contraption. These are identical, so... Um, I was just going to say can't get this wrong, but... <laughs> if there's a way to get it wrong, I'll find it. If there isn't one, I'll find one anyway. Okay, now this goes on the... 
front, presumably like so. Yep. Um, okay. <laughs> and now he's got a mustache. Okay, now the small carapace pieces go on the back first. These are all identical according to the instructions and we clip them onto these axles. If we want to call them axles, rods, pegs, whatever, you know. The thing what the legs is attached to. Why is this suddenly weird? Uh, okay. Ah. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. You just, okay. You, apparently you got to make sure you don't accidentally, um, have the tail bent downward when you put this guy on because, uh, because then it gets pushed out of the way where it isn't supposed to be. Okay. Now. Let's get the rest of the carapace on here. Um, or, you know, try to put its ass on its head. This goes here, like so. Um, this is the second one. And attaches like that oh this is pretty cool like see it has inside and outside carapace pieces <laughs> nice um this one goes on here like so and finally and finally we got something wrong again no um we did not you see these two fin pieces here go on here and this is you might have <laughs> you might have noticed um, when I this is that uh, these are actually wind up keys and it comes with two. <laughs> Because heaven forbid we give this guy a gun, right? This is all completely backwards because I don't know how to reconstructions anymore. I mean, I only did, I only built Lego my entire childhood, right? So why would I know how to read instructions? <sighs> okay, hold it just like the instructions. And that's apparently where the camera cut out. Sorry about that, folks and about the microphone cable dangling into the shot. Anyway, here's the Guzzock in motion. As you can see, it sort of wiggles up and down and the legs move, more like the Molga than the Volga, really. You can tell the legs aren't moving individually, but it's okay for a wind-up Zoid, I think. The big disappointment is the Wild Blast mode. See, you put the feelers in place like this, you bend the head down like that, Roll it up into a ball, realize you forgot to fold the tail fins in, and then, yeah, that's it, seriously. So the movement clearly isn't anything at all like the Volga, which you can see next to it here. You can check out my video of that one if you follow the link in the description below. As far as looks go, I guess which one of the two you like better is really down to personal taste. The Guzzock looks a bit less angular and more modern, but also somehow less threatening than the Volga. On its own merits though, I do like it. It continues the trend of the more drab collars and the more recent Zoids Wild kits, and I really like all those panel lines on the carapace, even though I didn't do anything to them for this build. You know I'll eventually paint a second one of these and it should look really cool with the panel lines down properly and some weathering. Up close I also really dig the face. The Zoid's wild eyes are a bit hit or miss for me but on this one they definitely work. So that's it for this one. 
I should be getting the Death Rex next, I think, because HLJ ran out of Stegos Ages before they could send me mine. So expect that to happen in the next couple of weeks. As always, I had fun making this, so I hope you had fun watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and now go and build something over the holiday season. You know, that backlog, that won't take care of itself.